So we move right on to this uh, item number four here for the plain bylaws, building permits. Um, <coughs> Dave, I'm going to hitch your um, item four of your manager's notes to this so that.
on the low end of the spectrum our fear is, is that some of this stuff isn't connected to septics or you know creating some other issues that um, obviously we're also grappling with uh, in some instances these are unwanted mobile homes we got multiple pieces of property on one parcel which creates problems down the road um, a lot of times we've got one out of week five where you know the person's died it's ended up in the you know the daughter's hands you know she's not paying taxes the person's having a tough time evicting her you know they're on the same parcel it just creates issues um, we have nothing in place to kind of prohibit that um, you know so down the road these you know are issues for the listers and creates additional headaches so I think that there's a fair amount wrapped into what we could do with a person if you were deciding to take, you know, or look at a building permit. And I would also talk about driveway permits and overlay permits, you know, things that, you know, kind of end up, it's not a lot, but it should be, because I've only gotten a few building permits. I mean, driveway permits, I know there's a lot more going on out there. Uh, and there's a tie in between the floodplain and new building as well. You know, obviously anybody, building and they have to be in a floodplain would be in violation of the floodplain bylaw so there's there's a connection there um, I, I think that was my intent of my managerial notes that you know i think that it you know it, it would work simply if we just have the building or the floodplain bylaws we would take the extra step um, i would advocate that we look at a hard time person to start. I think there's more than enough out there just on the junkyard ordinance to keep somebody busy, you know, time and a half to avoid quick times. Jay, I, I, uh, I agree with you that the possible number of things that this part time employee can do is, is uh, the, the need is there. Um, but I'm just wondering if you gave any thought as to what the Characteristics of that perfect employee would be. I mean, it just sounds like we need someone that understands construction, someone that's willing to sort of be uh, bold enough to um, approach some people and say, you're out of illegally doing something. But I'm just wondering what kind of thought you have given to if you have gone that far. I, you know, it, it would be a challenge, I think, to bring somebody on part time, truthfully. But I think that, you know, I would, I would start by looking at another town that may have a part time zoning administrator and kind of bridge the gap there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and pull somebody over that I don't think they need to know necessarily, you know, in depth, you know, building. You know, I don't think that we're not doing a code. We don't have anything that says, you know, you need to build a house any particular way, so there's not a code enforcement, you know, right. in that respect, um, you know, we're simply saying, you know, we're simply going out and getting the people that are not, you know, letting us know that they're building, you know, we're trying to train them that they do come in and, you know, pay the $10 fee to tell us that they're building so that we can, you know, one, we know they're there, you know, then there's a couple of things that kick in, you know, it kicks into the grand list. We understand that the development there will go out and we will, you know, eventually, you know, buy it. You know, it just means that, you know, we find it five years after the fact and we've lost five years of revenue. Or do we find it up front? Um, we, you know, so the person would simply need to, you know, go out and find the new development. I think that the second thing is if, you know, to cross-check if the development has already occurred, if there's a septic permit to coincide with that, you know, is your driveway permit? A state permit. Yep, and those come through to us, you know, more or less, but where we then have a problem administratively here is that if there isn't one to match up, well then we need to take the extra step of communicating with the state of Vermont that you know we've got somebody without a permit and kind of following up on that um, and you know seeing to it that you know someone connects the dots here. You know at the moment that would fall upon me to take that step. Uh, I could call you know the health officer to do that as well. The health officer has that. Um, 
authority, but you know, these are some of the things that the person would need to do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you know that's something that you know somebody with some general administrative ability to do would be able to do that. You know, it, it would take. You know, you are going to run into some people that don't want to. You know, are going to want to avoid it. Um, but then again, on the flip side, you're going to have a neighbor that's probably very happy that we finally addressed certain problems. Yeah. So um, we, we were promised from Kevin Geiger a very simple ordinance. Now, my first idea of simple may be 20 pages. I, yeah. I, have, I would like to know what, I'd like to see an example of of a building permit. Building permit ordinance. Yeah. Um, because I, he's used to writing, or used to dealing with zoning ordinances that are I mean, thick. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what his idea of simple is like at all. Yeah, he gave us some idea, uh, Gordon, but I agree with you that it, it's, it was, it's not a legal document or it was, he was just speaking off the cuff yeah. as to what simple would be. Yeah. And the other thing I'm thinking is that um, we shouldn't spend too much time trying to invent something that's no doubt other towns have already done this. Mm -hmm. And maybe find some examples to, to work from. If you inquire around. Yeah. Is that right? Think so, Dave? I, th I, think, it's, I think so. Yeah. So. Um, the, the the trick here, I think, is the building permit without the zoning, you know, just the basic, but I think that he can give us, I can communicate with him and tell him we would like to take, you know, the next step of looking at what an ordinance mm -hmm. might look and feel like. The, the other thought I had was, from, from what you've written here, <coughs> it's pretty obvious that you have an interest in this. And, and, and quite a lot of knowledge about how this might work. Um, I wondered if what we really need is an assistant for you. So, on that note, the answer is, is it's starting to resemble an assistant position. So, what has happened or occurred in the last year, we haven't added back anything that wasn't here already, so we've added the building's ground person back. Um, and we had always had Bruce. Um, in this case, we now have Laura and Allison, um, you know, helping Martin upstairs. We kind of we're trying to or match, you know, the the resources, you know, that that are needed to kind of allow you know, people to do the job. You know, with Allison, it was kind of you know the, the payroll and some of the the AP and stuff was a perfect fit. The buildings and grounds for the highway department. In this case, these are things that are falling through the cracks that are not happening. That technically, you know, Bob would have picked up. You know, health officer is another one. You know that Bob is going to be leaving. I've kind of said, you know, we've got Dave. But these are things that you know, I don't have time to do if we want to pursue some of these bigger things such as the intersection and, and you know delinquent taxes and, and you know we've got other obviously after today other things that are pressing culverts and, and and some other road issues including Creechy Road that really is kind of what you should be paying for you know to go out and flag down and, and spend time you know on Independence Drive or, or out at the bottom of Weed Road, trying to flag these people and get them into compliance, really is a huge research, you know, time on my, you know, you know, if, and again, I have kind of not prioritized this, so it is falling through the cracks at the moment. Fred Coley still remains, you know, we, we never pick up the ball on that. And, and, you know, I see that in the distance. So these are things that will continually not be done, or if they do, are kind of the black hole of my time. And I'm not sure that's the best way to use me, um, including sitting down and spending, you know, two hours during the day this 
spilling out all the way current because we've got 30 of them or something. Um, that's something that was maybe traditionally followed by Bill, but I don't see Bill having that luxury either. So at the moment, I've got it. But all of these things kind of neatly fit together, you know, that somebody like this would handle, and there's overlap, except for maybe the overlay permits, but it is kind of an enforcement administrative thing. But the driveway permits, the junk ordinance, a building permit, and the floodplain bylaw all fit together neatly in one focus or one kind of realm. And yeah, I don't, although today I probably could have used one, um, I don't necessarily need somebody to answer the phones for me or type letters, but certainly I also don't need to be out chasing down somebody on Route 5 because they've got four junkyards out in front of their house and you know, the house is falling down. Um, and somebody should be doing that because it obviously it is causing problems and they're not the only one. We've got at least 12 of these things. Um, so I do think or would see, you know, we've talked about you know, throughout my hiring and, and a little bit after that time, an assistant position and what that would look like, I think that you're starting to see something that would resemble, you know, that. So, and you're, you're putting forth uh, the idea of that. Uh, as we would start for our time, um, that would give us a chance to see how it's working at the end of the year, you know, and so on. And that there would be um, funds coming in to offset the salary and benefits of such person to a limited degree. Uh, so it would not be a, a straight new budget item or <coughs> kind of a compromise. Um, what, when, ideally, when would this start? I mean, would we have to wait a year for the new budget cycle? We would, yeah. This would be something I would propose in fiscal year 21 budget, and, mm -hmm. you know. But I think that in talking about the floodplain bylaw and you know some of the issues that we've had with the you know with the building that we're seeing going on out there, mm -hmm. um, I do see you know we can only move so fast. You know, we still need to get the buildings and grounds person up and running. You know, for July, you know, late July, we need to put that out. Um, you know, it's going to take us a little bit to, you know, get ourselves situated. So, and just from a budget perspective, we wouldn't be able to do that for a year. I'm going to ask another question. How many properties did, were, did you find that were on the low tax rolls? So in terms of dwellings, <clears throat> still looking around 20, I'll say. The and then mix of that was probably more than half were mobile homes, usually second or third hand mobile homes, and relatively, uh, you know, not a lot of value there, but as Dave alluded to, there's more sites for issues, et cetera, like that. And, and of the houses, some of them were like legitimately like one year old, and so we would have found them, but some were as old as five years old. What about the other extreme. structures too? Like that. That's not counting barns and sheds. That's no. can barely keep on top of it. No. So there's certainly uh, the way we've been counting things. If it's larger than 100 square feet, so there's certainly a fair number of those. I'm going to say at least 20 of those. Yeah. Okay. Sir, want an idea of what right. the problem? Yeah. Okay. Do you know of 20 out of how many in the last 20 years, as far as now? Excuse me? Do you know 20 out of how, of how many that were since, caught? Since, right, so that would have been since the last wide view appraisal, about 2001. Is, is that's, that's kind of the basis of Yeah, yeah, that's what it means. So in that time frame, yeah. I know, but, but I don't. You, 20 were missed. How many how many were processed? I don't have that number right off the top of my head. Because there certainly were yeah. houses built within that period of time that were properly accounted for. 
but in this case, it's been more about what, what did we sweep up that we weren't expecting, that kind of thing. But I, I don't know off the top of my head. There's certainly had a fair number of some houses built that um, we did get yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes people do contact us, but that's not the norm. So, Gordon, you're suggesting that we uh, ask Dave to contact uh, Two Rivers and, and come up with some sample building permits, mm -hmm. some language for the building permits. Yeah. And, um, and then, Dave, can maybe you, over time, begin to create a job description? That would, uh, uh, I almost did. I, 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 <laughs> I came pretty darn close. I can take the paragraph on um, if you want. From what you got there, you know, I, I think that, you know, I'll be honest, I mean, there's a fair amount of stuff going on out there. And, um, you know, it comes back to, you know, what I think that is missing from a lot of our discussion is, is can't really get a good feel for it unless you're really on the inside, but the need for an entity to, to function, you know, a business or, or, you know, in our case, a municipality, it needs, you know, a structure, it needs, it needs to, you know, have, and I talked about it a little bit last meeting, you know, so we've got revenue, we need that, you know, a, a good structure in place for accounting for that revenue, and, and you know, it, it's working, you know, properly, and we've got two places, you know, missing <coughs> development that's occurring that we're just not picking up because there's nothing in place for this to go through, and then we have the delinquent taxes, so we're missing it in a couple of different places. You know, that's not to mention, and, you know, Doug, you know, and the second part of this is not just a new development, but an astronomical amount of just additions and, and renovations that occur in town that, you know, we, again, nobody knows what's going on, and, and that's kind of a miss. Just simply because they, you don't need to tell anybody. You, anything can happen, you know, I can, you know, find a house on Weed Road, and I wanted to convert that barn into a nice, you know, guest house, you know, power to it. I mean, you know, if it's close to the road, you know, we may flag it, you know, otherwise, you know, we don't pick it up until the next reappraisal, you know, bottom line. Okay. Um, you know, so that there's just nothing to move through the, 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 the system. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of this, we've got issues that we've had to kind of clean up after the fact. You know, we, again, I put it in here, such as the Coley property, the 21 house or something to that effect, that we're late to the game, and it is a troublesome proposition at that point. Not that having somebody out there enforcing things is going to solve everything. You know, you're still going to get people that drag their feet and becomes problematic and there is an important, there is a cost to this. There is legal action that a lot of times you have to take. But, you know, when you haven't ever had that in town, you know, it becomes a way of life, a way of doing things. And we've got a lot out there. Ultimately, it does come back as a cost to the town. And, and you, know, I, you know, it's not like, you know, we're bringing something out or out of that, we're gonna kind of wave a magic wand and, and make this go away. It's gonna be a pretty tough <coughs> effort to, you know, move this forward and, and, you know, build that structure. But at the moment, we really don't have that structure in place. Um, something that I think is needed, just like the accounting structure, um, you know, the listing structure. Um, you know, this in this case, this is something that's absent. Not to mention, if you guys have any free time kicking around, I've got more than enough I can put on this. Thank you. Does anybody else have any comments about this? When this was first proposed, is supposed to be simple. As far as I, I think this is far from simple. I was picturing 
and you come into the Worcester's office and you fill out a form and hand it to Doug so that you know something's going on <clears throat> at your property and that he's aware of it and when it's done or you can drive by and see what stage it's at and, and do a reappraisal. This is far more than what was proposed in November. So just to kind of respond, I don't know if we ever, in talking about a, a building permit, I'm not sure if we really got that into the details of the structure. In, in my discussion, and I've been talking with Doug for almost, since I've been here, the response I've kind of gotten from the listers is they don't want to mix the enforcement with, you know, going out and, and, and assessing property. Um, it's difficult enough for them to formulate a relationship um, as far as the assessing and, and getting in the door. They're also wearing, you know, the hat of enforcement and wearing that dual role, then it's just a little bit more difficult for them. It's somewhat the response I've gotten from them. Yeah, but, um, you're right. This encompasses is a whole lot more than just a building kind of these ideas. Um, I'm not sure I, I don't know. Something you brought up here. Something to think? We all need to think about it. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the interest of moving on, they just do that to. Uh, Um, one of the things I do worry about is um, with the floodplain bylaws, we haven't sort of resolved. Um, I don't think we resolved either who's the body that's going to look after it and who's going to be the, what's the question phrase, the administration officer or something. Uh, I don't know if we should let that slip or is it okay to let slip? I think it's okay to let it slip a little bit longer. Okay. Um, I think Peter had some concerns that, um, you know, it going for too long and FEMA and the program and running a foul program and, you know, then yanking for, you know, the benefit of the whole thing. It's an interesting thing to talk about, isn't it? Um, Otherwise. <laughs> um, I think it's, again, two different things. You know, if you're just going to sit back and pretend or not that it's tense, but just have somebody simply administer a permit, you know, I've had one person come in in a year and a half, whereas <coughs> you've got somebody actively looking at new building, and the new building happens to be in a floodplain, and I think you're going to run into a whole lot more activity than there's, there's a distinct sort of difference there between the two. Okay, so I think we need to get this uh, Keep this on the agenda up and on. <coughs> and work on trying to get these answers from Kevin and maybe the league can give us some ideas of other towns or send us some examples or something about um, a position such as this. Is that possible? Okay. And, uh, okay. For Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll come sure. and wrap that up. So after last week's select board meeting and next day, that's when they spoke the next day, I went and looked on their map and there's about 88 properties that I figured out that had a structure that was in the floodplain based on his map. Now some people had this letters of map amendment he was talking about that you can, because the map is kind of inaccurate and you can have somebody look at it. So, that's not counting the people. There's probably another 15 people that had one of those letters already. And it looked like there was a lot of people who were, like of these 88 people that were in, a fair number of them were probably, could qualify for that because their neighbors did, but they didn't kind of thing. But just as a, so a sense of how many cases are out there. Okay, and in theory, if you're in that zone, you're not even supposed to dig a hole without a permit for the state or whoever's maintaining that, so. Yeah. Now some of those folks would, and, and I'll just also say that we were hoping when we sent out the change of appraisal notice to put an insert in there to 
say something to these folks like, we suspect you might have the house in the floodplain now. If we don't have anything set up to deal with that, maybe we should think twice about that, but it would seem like a, the kind of thing we wanted people to know about their property. And here's some links, here's how you can go and talk to someone about it. If there's a mortgage on it, they would know, wouldn't they? I don't know. I don't know that. You'd think if they were in the, the extreme floodway, the way you talk about that red zone, that that's where you have the most permits required and the most et cetera about that. But I didn't, I just barely used his map, tried to look for structures. That's all the time I could put into it. <coughs> you know, just as an order of magnitude, we were going to send out some kind of insert that says, hey, you should check, you know. Your property might be in floodplain. Please check this out. And he kind of had some numbers about how many people had flood insurance. I think he said twelve. Yeah, there were okay. very, very few. Right. So, so I don't know if the awareness thing might be part of yeah. this. And I don't know what, but I also. So if, I guess if there was somebody in place by early June who could be identified as a point person, we could include that information in our handout as well. Or. If you really don't think that's going to happen that soon, we'll talk and we would not put a hand down in the, no, I don't. an insert in I that don't. cut. I don't want to. I don't imagine it's going to happen. I think we, this, to solve, you know, to get our footing on this, this, this is important. I think it's good for that to send something out and, and it's worthy, but I think that for us to get proper footing on this would be, you know, more of a priority. We could always send something out as we progress. You know, if we had it for, so. Right, because I don't necessarily want to create a sudden influx of action if we're not, you know, need to be able to deal with it or not, whatever. But, and I certainly encourage people in general to be aware if they're in a floodplain or not. And since there's this extra focus on it, you know, I'm thinking about one of those lines. Would, would you be interested in being the administrator? I don't even know what that entails. And right now, I'm up to my eyeballs. Yeah. With just getting us through what we gotta do right now. So I don't see that as something I could take on in the short term. Okay. We're gonna move on. Yep. Okay. Just put this on hold for a little bit. Okay. You saw the letter, it was in the yes. package. Yeah. Um, and uh, have you have you raised enough money to match the grant? Is that no, no, not completely, but we are more than halfway there. So I think we're on track. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so that's uh, uh, the deadline for the application is May 1st. And um, we've been working weekends to really plug in the numbers, and that's a lot of work to apply for grants. And, but I think we are really working hard to do the publication. Do you know but when you came in the very first time mm -hmm. to talk about flooding? Mm -hmm. And it, it always concerns me, and I think it does others too, that mm -hmm. we don't want to um, do anything that will detract from the appearance of the hall. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, I don't know quite. You know, are we going to are we going to be appraised of what your plans are at some point? Yes, uh, in fact, I've been showing to people whenever uh, mm -hmm. I've and there's really not much to uh, add. So the current plan is to you have a railing, metal railing on the balcony, mm -hmm. clamp two spotlights on either side, both sides. So that's already part of what you, you have. We have. The system. Yeah, it's already there. Yeah. And then, but the one is just not functioning, I think. So that's why we're going to replace whatever out there and then just two <coughs> functioning spotlights. That's one. <coughs> and um, on the stage itself, on the side wall, both sides, both sides of the wall, I think uh, I actually have a, uh, in con contact with Vermont Division of Historic preservation, it's an agency, 
to make sure that whatever we do complies with the uh, um, work to be done on historic buildings. And they, they, they uh, take what the, as long as it doesn't visually um, impede um, or take out some kind of a cultural, historical element um, of the wall or something. Whatever we are planning to do, we have two options right now just for the five walls on the stage. Put on the stand or minor stain wall on the wall. But yeah, you're talking back in, in, in the stage. So if this was the stage audience, wall mount, either wall mounting or portable yeah. lighting. That I think they could come on the stage itself. So they'd be badly visible. It's exactly it's behind the curtain. Yeah. But we don't want to. We want to minimize the um, damage to the wall if yeah. we, we can. So I think uh, our preference would be to put on a portable um, stand, and then whenever. But it has to be all rigged up. So I think it, that um, if the cable is going to be connected through the wall to the Lighting room. And I think the uh, infrastructure to a uh, housing is already there, so I, I don't think it's a huge problem. Yeah. So currently, um, we're looking at the still vicinity of $7,000 project, and we already have more than $2,000 um, raised just for this. Yeah. Just for this. And uh, I want to just mention this time, um, I've been talking about this for two years, and in, you know, initially I've had this um, air about, you know, okay, well, people are asking me to, do, to look into, so I've had this begrudging. But now I'm taking complete ownership of the project because this is, I realize, is also safety hazard. That uh, the stuff we have up there, it's really, well, some of them is outdated, but it's very messy. So <clears throat> I want to clean that up, the whole upstairs, the, the balcony area and lighting booth. It's due. And some of the old equipment has to go. And I think that's going to cost money, too, in terms of probably partially hazard, hazard waste um, disposal. And that's something that you know we have to pay for, too. And um, unless town would like to <coughs> team up with this, you know, with us for this project, because it, I think there is a safety hazard. And also the way things are rigged right, right now, it's not 100% kosher, is what I'm told by the uh, lighting design person. So I think rectifying it is actually a priority. And so we want to do all this together, you know, adding new equipment and just completely uh, remedy the uh, whatever not non-compliant situation. I'm wondering. If they should be responsible for disposing of the stuff that was put there 30 years ago by, by, by town. It almost seems like. Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe that. Maybe there'll be an element there that wants to pay for it. If you come up with some, I don't know, some equipment that just. Rubbish at this point, which you think it may cost to get rid of. I wouldn't, somehow that doesn't fall, seem right, but that's your responsibility. Okay. That's at least that's my opinion. Yeah. Right. Maybe we can revisit this, because I like to organize a uh, cleaning party during the summer months. And um, you know, prior to that, I'll consult with you all again and see. Yeah. How. Just be careful you don't uh, destroy something historic. Oh, no, 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 no. We had, we had, uh, I'm talking about a lot of stories, but when we were working on the curtains, yeah, um, someone was instructed to paint over oh. something that was hanging there. It was a, a matter of moments between destroying one of those historic curtains with a paintbrush oh. and, and somebody coming along at just the right time to stop it. Oh. So, <laughs> so in other words, just, uh, you know, when you, Throwing away stuff, just make sure that yeah. somebody is, that knows what's what. Yeah. That sounds like that. I think of whatever the project we're going for, going through should be always in consideration <coughs> with your 
approval. I think I've taken note of that. So the, the, I think I. Do we need a motion? So I'm going to make a motion that we we write to the the Parks Council with the recommendation to um, support the Harlem Community Arts request for funding or grant match. Yeah. Okay. So I'll sign the letter. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we've been talking for a while, uh, and I want to uh, tell you about the top truck in a moment, but just to refresh everybody, we've been talking about the um, purchase of a new 10-wheel dump truck. This is to take the place of an existing 10-wheel dump truck uh, that is driven by Skip. Um, this is you know, one that, uh, again, is just kind of hanging on. Um, we kind of murmured uh, some, some good verses through the winter and it's held on and it's got us this far, but um, at this point, you know, we've been looking at for, you know, four or five months now um, to change, you know. Been talking about this essentially since we put the last one out the bit. Uh, and um, this is coming to fruition and I'll let Bill talk a little bit about the, you know, the bid process and, and the decision, the recommendation for purchase. We'll just talk a little bit about putting it out to bid and just the, uh, the recommendation for purchase. Oh. Yeah, we started back in the late fall, early winter, when we put the RFP out and um, got a response back from all the, all the truck uh, dealers, and two out of the three uh, body, dump body dealers. Previously, we out the same thing we did before. You know, and, uh, automatic. Yeah. Ended up full mill with a, another uh, Freightliner from Patriot. Um, well, what was the difference in uh, their specs and your specs? What was the difference? Um, nothing. Because from what I put out for specs as I'm learning the process here, I didn't have all the exact information, like the engine horsepower, um, some of the specifics like that that I didn't have. But it was it matched for what I requested. You know, ten wheeler, um, aluminum fuel tank, aluminum wheels, um, power windows. You know, green. So yeah, if, I, this well, is basics, really. if I can just clarify, Bill and, and Matt. So I think Matt, you're looking at the fact that we have two two yep. pricings here. Yep. Um, so we put it out, and um, there had been some discussion with Skip about perhaps doing a you know 10 10 gear truck and uh, slightly different suspension. Um, and we spec that out as well, and uh, to come in a little bit less, but the wait time on that would be almost next year at this point in time, you know, so we kind of ruled that out. Uh, I can let Bill expand, but uh, the preference really with us from a management point of view is to go with an automatic uh, over the standard anyways, but, um, you know, we did, you know, Bill did, you know, you know, Skip had mentioned, you know, his desire and we spec'd it out and, um, So the lower number is the one you want to buy as you bid it. <coughs> so as bid is actually a little bit higher at 138.614 versus the stamp. So the, the, the bottom one is the original bid. With the trade-in, Patriot Viking back is 138.614. The standard you know, the 10 gears um, standard is 137.08, but that, you know, the differential is almost a 10 month differential in length time, simply because they've got more automatics essentially kicking around than, than they do the standards. <coughs> um, Bill, do you, um, if I understand this, if, if it, going with the Dealership Patriot, we are going with another Freightliner. Yeah. And I'm not familiar with the Viking. Is that 
Are you using other Viking equipment in the fleet today? Yep. Okay. We've run a couple of Vikings already. Okay. Trend. 
Uh, I think that that is multiple reasons for that. You know, we have less kids in school um, and available to the after school program. There is some um, competing interest with the library and the computer <coughs> programs and some other stuff that they've got going on over there. And I think there has been, you know, um, I think that those two things probably are a majority of it. But uh, we have seen a downward trend in that. Question? It, is it that we have a, a small percentage of those that might be use the after school program, or is it just exactly the the lower number of students of the available students? Is the percentage decreasing? I, I you know we haven't asked ourselves that question. I, I can't tell you. Okay. Um, we have to have John do a little bit, you know, dive into that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Highway, we are trending about where we need to. Uh, we have not expended, um, you know, we've got $65,000 still sitting there. We'll have to expend more than that on the uh, Brownsville Road project. Uh, just so happens on the highway, we do have a surplus that's going to offset that. You see that in the revenue side as well. You see that the FEMA money has come in, um, also um, money from the IME uh, that is offsetting or adding to our surplus in this case. Um, you know, again, kind of a tale of two different funds here. Um, however, that being said, the highway fund is running about on track. Uh, although, again, if you notice individual line items, we have overspent on subcontracting and hard pack. That was kind of laid out for us back in you know, July and August um, that we were going to do that. Uh, however, we also noticed salt, maybe about a $15,000 overrun on salt, the winter that we've had. Um, so we do have overages there. Um, however, we seem to be running, you know, I expect that maybe we will run that $25,000 over, that being the subcontract and the hard pack. Um, however, you know, again, we had surplus monies to kind of offset some of that, as well as the additional money for the Brownsville Road as well. One thing I noticed in any where it says fuel that we are that we're running over. We are running over. And Mary, you brought that up during budget season this year or last. I can't remember. Um, we try not to just kind of spike with the season. We kind of, you know, if, you know, last year was a high year. You know, we didn't bring the numbers all the way up to what we spent last year. And, you know, trend is continuing. You know, we will need to budget more for, for fuel again next year as well. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, I'll just mention two things real quick. Joe Olmstead Jr. Uh, did give us notice. Uh, he's going to go work for uh, his dad over um, DEW. Uh, so we started the process of rehiring the assistant position for the uh, rec center. Uh, John is writing up some stuff. Um, he'll work with <coughs> Martin as far as putting that out. Um, advertise that position. Uh, and this is just kind of a side note, a little bit of activity on Independence Drive. Um, Mr. Tobin did get, um, the state has been intrigued by his activity. Um, the court upheld, so they, they did bring him to court. Um, they did uphold a judgment against him, it's about $42,000. Um, it's creating some, you know, a little bit of an atmosphere over on Independence Drive. Um, I guess that might be kind of part of 
part of the course over there, but um, um, they did write him up for, you know, does not have an actual state junkyard permit. Um, and uh, he also had some storage issues going on in there as well. So it um, doesn't really affect us. It's kind of a state issue, but um, <coughs> Jumping around here, um, Dave, the first item of the Three Corners intersection and yeah. the utilities, as I wrote to you today, I cannot be available on the 26th, so I don't know if Ms. Gordon will sit in on the 26th. And that's gone, and okay. I'm excited to hear that we've got people to come together. Okay, that's when that's when uh, you're going to talk about the the bear with the engineer. I'm pretty ecstatic. I got five utilities in one room with an engineer. Yeah, I wish I was there. I mean, <laughs> okay, well, sure. I'll plus plus a couple extra, so we're looking at maybe eight. Yeah, yeah. Eight people. Okay, make sure that. Uh, I have, yeah. What time? What time is that? Ten a.m. You don't know which day yet, though. Friday the twenty sixth. Kind of technical discussion, but it is what it is. Yeah. I may write up my questions for you. So anxious this one. tell you two of the big sticking point. You know, one is consolidated, they're already buried over by the sidewalk, what do we do with them? And uh VTEL desperately wants to know, you know, about the, you know, they're gonna have to essentially dig, you know, underline to all these buildings that they surface here. So you know, they want to know if that's one feasible or two, you know that will you know, big feasibility is the biggest question I have on that. Yeah, share the conduits and how many economies can come out to one pole? That's going to be true of the power, too. How are we the buildings? Just a general question. Um, it appears Green Up Day is unfolding in good hands. The uh, Conservation Commission has a role, the Clyde has a role. I don't think we have a role per se. Yeah. It's kind of a separate, you know, we provide some base for them. We put them on dumpsters and we pull out some tables for them and stuff, but otherwise it's pretty well run by Ginny and who's the other guy from the Conservation yeah. Committee. Yeah. And a couple of them. Dean. Dean, yeah. Dean and his wife. Yeah. Dean and his wife and Ginny are the real go getters. Okay, so we, we have to go into executive session. We are going into executive session. So? Uh, one question that I forgot about. Oh, okay. May I? Sure. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so in the application, there is a, a question asked uh, about the ADA, American Disability right? and uh, whether the town already has a checklist completed to indicate that there's a 2010 standards of accessibility design. Do you know anything about that? I would say yes, available in this entry way. Do you have anything before or something you have already done? How did you do that here? We have, we are. Uh, yeah, I believe so. 
<laughs> that you need something in writing? I'm, I'm wondering. If you have anything, then I think it does. Um, I, I mean, encourage the person to. But if you don't, you don't. That's okay. I missed the question. What? So um, even though we don't own this facility, we are housed by this facility. And they are asking if this existing facility is uh, ADA compliant. Um, yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's it. Right. It is ADA compliant. Yeah. I mean, I see that, you know, the bathroom, you know, yeah. yep. and elevator, and the accessible from basement. And, Correct. Yeah. No, no ramp. Yeah, the only oh, there's a ramp coming down um, from both parking lots on the sidewalk. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's a ramp. Yeah. All right. The so caveat is sometimes the elevator doesn't work. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. Thanks. Thank you. 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 